So, uh, just real quick, so this is an old run of mine that has recorded the DVD and I never uploaded it or showed it anywhere. Um, so I'm going to show it right now for the first time on stream. And it is a, my lowest recorded time in Double Dragon 2. It's all the way back from 2009. So let's take a look and I'm going to time it as well. See what kind of time we get. So here we go. All right, so some of the strats are gonna be a little bit outdated here. And uh, the execution will be pretty strong for the most part. Like I said, this is my best uh, run that I do have recorded. And back in the day before streaming, I used to record my runs on DVD and then you would have to go through this kind of arduous process of getting them um, into a high quality format that could be then uploaded to Speed Demo's archive which is where I do have a run, which is actually slower than this one, but it has a higher entertainment value because Speed Demo's archive was more about really high quality videos and not necessarily record time. So even though this was my quote unquote record time, uh, I actually preferred to go with the slightly slower uh, video because it had a really, really good final boss fight. In fact, a perfect final boss fight, which is pretty darn entertaining and something that I wanted people to see. And since this, like, again, since this wasn't in the days of streaming, otherwise people would have just never seen it. And that's not something I wanted people to miss out on. So it's a little bit of a weird decision when you think about things nowadays, but, um, like, you wouldn't submit a run like that to speedrun.com, right? Um, you would just make a highlight and be like, hey, perfect boss fight. Oh, and here's my uh, actual fastest time. <laughs> so anyways, we get burn off. Looks like about a, a 121 or something like that. Uh, not the greatest pace coming out of stage one. You, you can go super reset heavy on stage one and try to get like 118 and less, but it's it becomes a huge grind. Like it's really not worth. Um, I would say that anything 121 or lower is fine to keep. So that's kind of the outside of my range there. Um, some old strats there. Those definitely don't work as well anymore. And yo, we're getting a really big raid right now from Cool Kid. Raid and a host from Cool Kid. Welcome everybody. I'm actually showing a very old video from 2009 that has never been seen on the internet. Uh, this is my best recorded time of Double Dragon 2. So spoilers, this run is going to be actually good. I'm not going to reset. <laughs> so you came at the right time. Uh, welcome. Hidden tapes. <laughs> Dude, it's not even a tape. It's from. It's a DVD. I used to record all my runs to DVD back in the day before this. This is before streaming days, you guys. This is 2009. Like, people weren't really streaming back then. If they were, they probably had a webcam pointed at their monitor or at their uh, CRT. So, yo, and a host from Mitch, dude, the double host. Every Everybody's coming right in time to get to see this run, this epic run. <laughs> So, I'm not actually playing right now, guys. This is a replay of a run from 2009. Um, so, so far, so far it's going well. I shouldn't say that. I've, I have jinxed everything today, you guys. In fact, I jinxed this so hard that I was showing this run like 10 minutes ago, and my computer blue screened. So, <laughs> so let's just hope that doesn't happen again. If it does, then it's just, we're not going to show this run until some later date. <laughs> um... But anyway, yeah, this this is not a good strat. You want to keep uh, from the screen from scrolling too far to the right. So now the Lindas are going to come from the left-hand side, which loses quite a bit of time because you have to make your way all the way back over to the right once you finish them. Um, it is actually cool, kid. Yeah, that death is used because you actually want to manipulate the first two enemies. If you don't do that death, um, then they will have some very, very random patterns, most of which are bad. Like they can back up and run away from you, or they can throw a weapon at you but rarely ever will they just sit there and let you attack them. So I found out that dying there actually just it warps you closer to them and then they actually behave the way you want. So, and we got a good fight with Arnold. Can't see him, he's there, trust me. That's, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger that we just punched out there. He'll be back though, like too many times. All right, nice. That's good when you get the knee on both of them. Oh, but I went too early on that one. So that knee is actually it's a four frame trick. It's 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 kind of hard to pull off, and you can only do your your special moves from like a crouch position. So that's why you see me always like having to jump first, or if you get up off the ground, you can also 
do your, your special attacks. And then this strat is just not even smart to go for. Don't, don't go for that strat. It doesn't save like hardly any time. And you can just run off the edge there. But we made it. We made it. Ooh, did we get all three Lindas? No, of course she went up top. That's like the inexplicable... Like, she spawns and then she just goes in some weird... Like, I'm gonna go up here now. <laughs> like, why? Um, and then this is also an old strat. That's that's a little bit slow. But I mean, heck, all these strats are old. This, this run we're talking about is from 2009, but I basically invented a lot of the strats that you see in this run anyway. The only people running it at the time were me and DK28. Uh, so we were the only ones coming up with any strats. And this game's kind of straightforward too, like... There's not a whole lot you can do. You're pretty much relegated to trying to group enemies the best you can. And, uh, and go for, like, you know, so cycloning those guys there is, is better than getting them with the knee. It's just a little bit more reliable um, for the escape part anyway. Maybe it's not. Um, fighting these guys, it's actually nice to have them in the open because the one thing they can't do when they're out in the open is they won't dodge your knees. Like, you, you can see where they are, but when, normally you kill those guys kind of off screen to the right. But they'll duck a lot, and you can't see what's happening, so it gets kind of frustrating. And this is a bad train pattern. You can actually get infinite lives here. A lot of people don't know about that, but there's a secret trick you can do in Stage 5 on this train to get infinite lives. It's uh, it's an underflow. You underflow your life total. So you have to have zero lives, and you have to be like on 1 HP. Those little HP bars are actually more than one hit, so you can get hit multiple times. Um, but anyway, that's another story. So th this runs on a solid pace. Like, this is this is a reasonable pace here. And I didn't take the intentional death because I didn't know about it back then. Normally you take an intentional death at the beginning of the stage to just teleport to the top step, and it gives you iframes. So no matter which flame pattern you get, you can pass through there. Like, stage 6 became so much easier because of that. This, this stage can be a pain sometimes. Um, but mostly it went okay. That one chin uh, hit me. Uh, he came out swinging. Can't blame him. You know, he saw what happened to his brother there, so he, he was he was trying to put up a fight. But and you can jump to the door from that second uh, platform I was just on. But the problem is that it's pixel perfect, and there's a sub pixel value that you need, which is random. So it's really not smart to try. Like it's so rare to get it, but but this is like a solid pace. I know for me back in the day, like I was probably like. I don't know if I was getting nervous yet, but I was probably starting to be like, oh, this runs for real. You, usually that's when you know, is you get if you get a run out of stage six and you're still on a solid pace, then that's like, you know, it's getting, it's getting serious. Um, but with that burn off troll, that's not good. This is the room that gets most people when they're first playing this game. This room's so annoying, but if you know the cycles, the cycles are always the same. So you can just count. It's just one, two, three, four, five. And then it stops. One, two, three, four, five. Like, if you can just kind of get that, you're fine. And I don't know why I did that. That was like, why did I just jump into that dive? <laughs> I mean, it worked out. Both of the guys came after me, so that was nice. Because a lot of times, oh man, that duck. That could have been such a good screen. The enemies can duck your knee. That's the that's the only reason it isn't too OP. Wow, that was such a lucky grouping. Oh my god. That is, like, so lucky. Normally that one guy won't charge at you, the guy that's further away. But if he does charge at you, you can get you can get some really fast starts in this area. Which, this area is pretty much the make or break for the stage because of how long it is. There's just so much going on. And this is the old strats. I didn't know that you could do, like, two punches and then a knee on those guys. So... Uh, Ninja Gaiden, MC Aaron Ice. I can't remember if there's anything else besides that. I gotta look at the schedule. But for sure I'll commentate Ninja Gaiden by Aquas. He asked me. And this is the strongest Arnold in the game. He takes four knees. Or you can actually do like three knees and an uppercut or a cyclone would do it as well. So, yeah. This, I knew I was on a good pace. Like, by the time, once you get out of seven, then it's like, for real. Because you know that it's, like, there's only two more stages... But 8 is swingy. 8 is a really swingy stage, because all these enemies are trolls. 
Like, all, they put all the troll enemies in this stage, and, like, the, the trolliest of enemies is uh, the final one in this stage, because he can disappear, he can do that disappearing trick. There's nothing you can do about it. Like, that's just an instant, like, at least four second time loss every time if he does that. Can't be stopped. So, but this stage is going okay so far. It's nothing too bad. That's correct, Steven. Uh, Alright, let's see what kind of ninjas we get. This is still the same strat. Jump kick and then knee. You can also do Cyclone if you want to be a little safer against these guys. But Okay, good. We got him to the right, but he got the combo. Oh boy. Uppercut. Yes. Get him. Get him. Don't let him disappear. No disappearing. Alright, we got him. Usually if you can get him up in that in that right hand side corner, you can get him. So this was then a really good pace that I was on here. But I think things are not gonna go so well in this final fight. That's that's probably why this was not the run that got submitted. But I need to be ready on time. Oh yeah, see that's not good if he does that. Oh wow, this is still lucky though. Oh my goodness, dude, am I gonna choke? That's six knees. Okay, he hit me. That's what happened. He got the combo breaker. This could have been the, such a god run. I still closed it out pretty well, though. It actually wasn't the worst. 11-16. 11-16. That's it. Thank you, Scratch Dragon. So again, I just wanted to show this run, everybody. This is a run from 2009 that I never uploaded or did anything with. Uh, it's the fastest recorded time that I have of Double Dragon 2. So now it can live on forever in case I never beat this time. I do have a faster time, but it's not recorded. <laughs> it was when I was practicing for the very first Games Done Quick event, which was called Classic Games Done Quick, back in uh, 2010. And I hadn't played the game in like probably three or four months, so I was re I was thought I'd be really rusty, so I didn't even bother recording. Like I was like, all right, let me just do some warm up runs, get back into the game. But I timed them. I wanted to see how I was gonna do, so I had like a stopwatch, and uh, I timed them. And then like one of the first few runs is just like 11:09 out of nowhere, and I was like, fuck, <laughs> why wasn't I recording? But. I think in retrospect though, like, if I had been recording, the chances of me choking that run would have been a lot higher. <laughs> Cause I, like when you're, like there's subliminally you know when it's not recorded that there's not as much on the line cause it, like nobody's ever gonna be able to see it. So. <laughs> yeah, Zallard. <laughs> Andrew G. That was before he told me to always record though, man. I think that that was maybe what spurred it. Or there was, no, there was something else too. Let's get to the end screen here. The end. Okay. Cool. 